Hello my friends, today we're going to be chatting all about Hermes's fine jewelry because of course we all know and love Hermes for their incredible leather goods but I don't think many people talk about their incredible fine jewelry pieces and the wide range of pieces that they offer. So I wanted to walk you through my everyday jewelry collection and then also give you some recommendations for pieces that I don't personally own. We're going to be chatting about some true classics as well as some newer jewelry launches, which I would recommend that you jump on sooner rather than later. Obviously, as long as it's not a financial burden on you. I mean, please do not put yourself in that because of my recommendation, but I did want to talk about Hermes's jewelry sooner rather than later, just because their prices keep getting steeper and steeper every single year. So if there's anything that you love in this video, make sure that you jump on it and put in a request for it at Hermes, or perhaps look into getting it pre-loved, which I'll definitely move on to later on. But without further ado, if you'd like to know everything that there is to know about Hermes's fine jewelry and where to jumpstart your collection, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. So I am thinking we should probably start with my recommendations because I have already, I mean, it's been a while. I think I did a jewelry collection video, an everyday jewelry collection video, because this isn't everything that I own, but these are the pieces that I wear most often. I think I did a jewelry collection video maybe last summer. So let me talk about some of my recommendations first, discuss everything that you have to know about Hermes's fine jewelry in general, and then I'm going to walk you through some of my most worn and most loved pieces. So basically Hermes's fine jewelry range can be split into two groups. Well, three if you also include watches, but personally I'm not a big watch person to begin with, but especially not when it comes to Hermes, even though I appreciate some of their designs, I do think that they're quite overpriced for what they are, but when it comes to actual fine jewelry, you can split them into two groups. So you would have silver jewelry and then solid gold jewelry. None of Hermes's fine jewelry is plated. Everything is made of solid precious metals. So when it comes to silver jewelry, I personally would not spend my money on designer silver. I just think for the quality, for how quickly they tarnish, oxidize, and start looking tired, it's just way too much money to spend. And yes, I completely understand that gold jewelry is going to be more expensive, but I do think that it's worth saving just a little bit more for because what you get will not only add a lot more value to your collection, but these pieces will also last a lifetime. So I am personally a big fan of gold and I do prefer gold jewelry over silver jewelry, unless you're buying a big statement piece, because I completely understand if you're buying a heavy chunky silver necklace that costs a few thousand dollars. If you wanted to buy that piece made out of solid gold, it would cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars. So that would really not make sense. But when it comes to smaller pieces, more delicate pieces, things that you're going to wear on a daily basis, I do think that it's worth putting a little bit more investment towards a solid gold fine jewelry piece from Hermes. And when we talk about fine jewelry, don't think that you have to spend tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars on Hermes's fine jewelry. Their pieces do start at around a thousand dollars and then obviously the sky's the limit when it comes to, well, Hermes doesn't technically do high jewelry, but they do have custom pieces that they only make one of, which is usually carried at their flagship boutique in Paris, but of course anything can be custom made, but you don't have to spend, you know, your entire life saving on a piece of jewelry from Hermes. It is something that is very much worth looking into if you have been toying with the idea of jumpstarting your fine jewelry collection or adding a piece of jewelry from Hermes to your own collection. I know it sounds intimidating and it sounds like a lot to buy gold jewelry from Hermes, but it's not nearly as bad as you think it is, especially not for the quality, for the designs and what these pieces will do for you and for your collection. I think it's pretty comparable to Cartier's prices. In fact, in some cases, their prices are a lot better for what you get. So I'm a big advocate of Hermes's fine jewelry. So without further ado, let's dive straight in and discuss some of my top recommendations. And one thing that I have to say is that most of my recommendations and most of my pieces are going to be in rose gold just because that's my preferred shade. But most of Hermes's jewelry come in three different shades, yellow gold, rose gold, and white gold. Personally, I do love Hermes's rose gold because their rose gold isn't too pink and it's not too yellow either. It's 
just the perfect balance between something really warm toned and something as cool toned as white gold and their white gold is really really cool toned and if you're going to look at Hermes fine jewelry online I think I have said this before but do not be fooled by their pictures online because their pink gold looks really really pink online I think they exaggerate the pictures just so they can make it easier for the consumer to see the difference between their yellow gold and their rose gold if the piece that you're looking at happens to come in both shades because in real life their rose gold is really not as rosy as it seems online so that's just a quick tip, but I would always say that if you're going to buy RMS fine jewelry, make sure that you get it directly from your boutique. Don't buy it online or get it from a reliable pre loved site. If I can find some great pieces for you, which there usually are a ton of them online because Hermes Fine Jewelry doesn't hold its value, unfortunately, I will make sure to have those linked down below for you because you can find some incredible deals online. But let's dive straight in. And where do we begin? I have actually pulled up all of my favorite pieces. If you have been with me for a while, you know that I am a sucker for rings. I just love rings and I'm not actually allowing myself to buy any more of them because my collection is not only complete, but it's overwhelming. I have too many rings and I know it's not a big issue to have. It could be a lot worse, but I have a lot more rings than how many I actually need and wear. So I'm not letting myself buy any more rings, but if I allow myself to, this is definitely the first ring that I pick up, which is the new Clou de Forge ring from Hermes, which comes in two different variations. So it comes either with two tiny little diamonds or without diamonds, I would probably go for the one with the two tiny diamonds which is slightly more expensive but I do think that that little bit of sparkle is worth I think the few hundred dollar difference between the two I think it's a really beautiful simple understated ring which would not only work beautifully on its own but it would also work great stacked with other pieces if you want something that is not quite as delicate as some of Hermes's other pieces if you want something that is a little bit more of a hard hitter this is definitely a great piece to look into. I love the industrial, really minimalist look that this ring has to it. And there are also pendants and bracelets in this collection, but my favorite piece from this line is going to have to be their ring. And then the other ring that I'm still missing from my collection, it's something that I have been lusting after for years and I was actually considering getting it with my ex, but then life happened, so I never ended up getting this ring, but it's one that I absolutely adore, which is actually from their wedding collection. So they do have a line of wedding bands and I think some engagement rings, although they are not really impressive, so I wouldn't consider looking into their engagement rings, but they do have a beautiful range of wedding bands. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is that they are never in stock. So if you want to buy yourself and your partner an Hermes wedding band, you have to order them way in advance and this piece has been part of their core line for a really really long time now but it does go in and out of stock quite quickly this season they it seems that they have put a lot of emphasis on restocking their wedding bands so this might be the season to get it now but the next piece i wanted to bring your attention to is their arian i think it's called wedding band which comes both with and without diamonds, I would personally opt for the Pave version with diamonds because I do think that it's really reasonably priced for the kind of sparkle and that eye-catching effect that this ring will give. But of course, you can also get it without diamonds. It's a really simple stripped down design, but it's all in the details. It's all in the craftsmanship and it does also come in different width. So if you don't want something thin, not that you have to wear it as a wedding band, but if you want something a little bit more substantial, there are versions that wrap around your fingers a few more times, but I personally really, really like their original Aryan ring that just wraps around your fingers once. And it is a really subtle take on a letter H that is set with the most beautiful little diamond. So this is a great one to go for. You don't have to get married to wear this piece. You can definitely wear it on any one of your fingers. And as I mentioned, it looks beautiful on its own, but it also looks great stacked with some other pieces that you perhaps already 
have in your collection. And I know exactly what you're thinking. Gee, I love the sound of these. These all look beautiful, but my store never has them in stock. Well, you do have a few options if you're seriously considering getting one of these pieces. You can, of course, always ask your boutique if someone else, if another boutique nearby has the piece that you're looking for in stock and they can see if it could be transferred. If that's not an option because no one has it in your area, I think your boutique can do something that is called I think they call it a global call or something along those lines where they will reach out to their corporate office and then the corporate office is able to see if anyone in the world has the piece that you're looking for, if it exists. And if it doesn't, it can be custom made for you. You do have to submit a wish for a custom piece. I think most boutiques at this point will ask you to put down a 50% deposit. And then once that deposit has been paid, your request will be sent to the atelier in France and then they'll be able to decide whether it's something that can be brought to life or not. If it is, it's going to take anywhere between six months to a year for your piece to be made. And if they decide that it's not something that they have the capacity to do, you will be refunded the full deposit. So that's definitely something that you can do. Obviously, you have to keep in mind that you won't be able to try the piece before you buy it, but you can always order something comparable just so you get a better idea for what you're actually paying for. So those are all options. Yes, unfortunately, most Hermes stores will not have a huge stock of fine jewelry. It's not like Cartier where you can walk into a Cartier boutique and more often than not, they'll have anything and everything in stock in every single size. And even if they don't, it can be delivered within a couple of days. That's unfortunately not the case when it comes to, I mean, anything Hermes, but these are definitely things that are worth waiting for. So these are also some tips and tricks when it comes to buying Hermes fine jewelry. So the two rings that we discussed, I would definitely recommend putting on your radar. And then let's move on to some pendants that I love. Some of these are quite new to Hermes, like the new Ferrandol necklace, which is a really, really cool design. So it is, of course, a take on the iconic Hermes Shandunk links. And it features a pendant that is set with Pave diamonds. It does come in different shades of gold. But what I love about this necklace is the actual chain because the chain is made up of tiny little itty bitty Shandong links, which I think is just so incredibly special. And that this is going to be quite a large investment because there is a lot of gold and there is a lot of work that goes into this piece. But if you're looking to really upgrade your MS Fine Jewelry collection, this is a classic timeless piece. You just cannot go wrong with. But if you're looking for something that is just a little bit more, something that will add a little bit more interest and a little bit more spice to your collection, something that is very different from everything out there, this is a great one to look into because it is of course inspired by one of the most well-known pieces by Hermes, their Kelly bag, but it's done in a really sophisticated and subtle way. I have to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of their classic back charms because they do have pendants and even bracelets that are quite literally inspired by the Kelly, the Birkin and the Constance. While I do love the idea of them, I personally wouldn't want to wear a little bag around my neck. It's nice for a teenager, but I think that's pretty much it. So if you do love the idea of something being inspired by some of your favorite bags, but you don't want to take it quite as literal as those pendants, this one is an amazing alternative, which is their Kelly Clochette necklace. This is a newer collection that launched a couple of years ago at this point, and it's quite a large range. There are earrings, there are pendants, there are necklaces in different shapes and forms, but my personal favorite is this one, which is the Kelly Clochette necklace in the small model, which actually features a little key and then a little clochette with pave diamonds. You can buy this pendant without diamonds, but I think if you're going to go for it, go all out, get it with the pave diamonds because there isn't that much of a price difference. And I think it is worth paying the premium in this case. This is a beautiful necklace, which I actually think is quite flexible. So you can play around with it. You can wear it in different ways. And if you're looking for a truly eye-catching head turning piece, this is definitely the bomb for you. Finally, let's move on to some of my most worn Hermes fine jewelry pieces, which again, this is not my entire collection, but these are the pieces that I actually keep at home because these are the ones that I reach for most often. And as you can see, I'll definitely do some close-ups for you guys so you can see these 
up close and personal but most of my pieces are going to be rings i used to buy myself a ring anytime there was a special occasion and at this point i have way more rings than i need but let's start with some of my favorites i'm going to start with the most recent addition to my ring collection from hermes at least which was a classic piece that took me years to get my hands on which is the so-called ash dunk ring so this is a really really simple quite wide band that features a really subtle h on the front that is set with diamonds i wasn't really sure how to feel about this range at first, but now I'm so happy to have this in my collection. A lot of people will actually buy this as a wedding band and they'll say that the H doesn't stand for Hermes, but it stands for husband. So if you would like to get your husband something special, this is definitely a great one to go for. It does work beautifully as a wedding band, but you can wear it on its own or stack with other pieces as you can do with any other pieces that I'm going to show you. But this is a great one to look into. It's a timeless classic. There's no way you can go wrong with this. And if you are considering getting your hands on this, I would do it sooner rather than later because I think I've had this for a couple of years now and I know that it's gone up a few hundred dollars since I bought it and I bought mine directly from the boutique. Thankfully, they had a size the size that I was looking for available out there and they were able to transfer it for me, but it did take a little while. And if you're wondering, I always wear a size 57 in Hermes rings because they go by European sizing. And speaking of sizing, let's move on to this one next, which is the classic Kelly ring. This is a ring that comes in several different widths, colors, sizes. There are a million and one different takes on the Kelly ring, but this is their classic Kelly ring with four diamonds in rose gold. And you might look at this and think, wait, there's something off about this ring. And there is, because this ring is originally a size 52. I bought it for myself as a pinky ring on a whim, but 52 isn't my pinky ring size. I usually wear a 57 on most of my fingers as a regular ring. And then for my pinky finger, I need usually a 47, 48, but they didn't have it in stock. So I thought, let me just bite in the smallest size that they have and uh, make it work well i couldn't make it work because this ring kept falling off so i didn't wear it for the longest time then i think i took it back to hermes and i asked them if there's any way that they could make it smaller or bigger they said that they can't because it does have four little diamonds so they're too scared to touch it and do anything about it because they were nervous that if they make it smaller or bigger the diamonds will come loose and i'll lose them eventually so i just ended up taking it to my regular jeweler who was able to stretch it for me so much that it now fits any one of my fingers. And I'm not sure exactly how they did it because the engraving is still intact. Like the engraving is still there. It still says that it's in size 52, even though at this point it's probably closer to a size 58. So I'm really glad that I'm now able to wear this ring because it is definitely a great stacking piece. It's not something that I ever really wear on its own. It's a little bit too thin on my fingers at least, for this to be worn on its own, but it looks incredible stacked with my other favorite, another classic from Hermes, which is their Shandong ring, their classic Shandong ring in rose gold. Now, if you are considering starting your Hermes jewelry collection and you're really lost, you don't know where to begin, but you would like to invest your money in something that is truly special, this is the piece that you have to get your hands on. It does come in rose gold. I think it also comes in yellow gold, maybe even white gold, and then it also comes in silver. But I would personally pick this up in some shade of gold, depending on what you prefer, because it makes not only the most unique ring that you can wear on its own, but it goes with anything and everything. You can stack this with your wedding band. You can stack this with any non-fine jewelry that you already have in your collection, and this will elevate anything that you stack this with. This is one of my most prized possessions. And again, it's something that just keeps going up and up in price every single year. So if you're looking to jumpstart your collection, this is a great one to go for. And then another classic, which I don't usually wear on its own. It's also something that I will stack with my Shandong ring, which is my CDC ring in rose gold. I'm not exactly sure why, because it's in the exact same size as all of my other rings, but this ring at this point is just a little bit too small for me, so I haven't been wearing it that much, but there was a point in time when you could not, 
I mean, I would just not leave my apartment without putting this ring on. I loved it so much because it's a really fun design. So it obviously features the Medora pyramids as well as the CDC ring, which does actually move. And these are the little details that I love Hermes fine jewelry for. I mean, you cannot find another piece of designer jewelry out there that is as beautifully done and as well thought out as Hermes's fine jewelry for the price. So the CDC ring is a good one to go for. I personally don't think that it looks the best on its own. It's definitely something that I would stack with something else. So you could stack it with the Shandong ring as I do. You could buy multiples of the CDC ring in different shades and you could stack them that way. But it's just a really, really fun piece that, as I said, I'm not, I haven't been wearing as much as I used to. But honestly, the Shandong ring is the one that just makes anything and everything look like a million bucks. And then the last ring that I wanted to show you, which I am completely in love with, I'm not even sure if this is still something that's around, but if it is, please do consider this, which is my gallop ring. I know for a fact that I have talked about this before, but the craftsmanship, the attention to details, the artistry on this ring is just mind-blowing for the price of course it's inspired by a horse's head and then a horse bite and then the horse head features a tiny little diamond which makes it look like a little unicorn but i just adore this ring now the gallop range is quite wide there are rings of different sizes there are necklaces and even bracelets but personally the rings are some of my favorite and if you're going to go for any one of these pieces I would personally recommend that you pick them up as a pinky ring because they do make so much of a statement without screaming and shouting the brand name, even though it is quite a small ring and you wouldn't think much about it. Believe it or not, this has to be one of my most complimented pieces that I own, not only from Hermes, but the most complimented piece that I own for And stuff. then the last piece I wanted to share with you I have to be really honest, isn't something that I have been wearing that much, but I pulled it out specifically for this video. And because I would like to make an effort to get my money's worth out of it, which is going to be my Kelly chain bracelet that I have in the Pave diamond version. Again, this is something that comes in different width, in different shades, and also in different variations when it comes to how many diamonds you buy this with. But I have the one that features the diamonds all over the Kelly twist closure. And then there's also a version where the chain is also encrusted with diamonds, but that was a lot of sparkle. And the reason I think I haven't been wearing this as much is because I'm not that much of a bracelet person. And also it is quite, it makes quite a statement. And I have definitely been leaning towards some of my more simplistic pieces. But I think with summer coming, it's definitely something that I can see myself getting a little bit more use out of and it is just one of the most beautiful pieces that i have ever seen i am not usually a fan of the kelly bracelets in general at least not the original line the original bangles because i think that they are quite annoying to wear they get stuck on everything it's really hard to find the right size because they only come in a handful of different sizes and the sizing is just simply not the best you know when it comes to something comparable like a Cartier love bracelet which comes in a ton of different sizes the Kelly only comes I think in three or four sizes which in my opinion is just simply not enough for a hard shot bangle that you cannot adjust whereas this is a lot more comfortable to wear because it's more of a flexible chain it's easier to find the right size and you can do a lot more with this in my opinion that you could with the Kelly bangle. I think the Kelly bangle only really works if you're going to make it part of a stack, whereas this is something that you can stack not only with other fine jewelry pieces, but it also looks phenomenal with leather jewelry pieces if that's something that you already have in your collection. And my friends, it is your turn to share your thoughts on Hermes fine jewelry. I mean, I completely understand that if you're purely buying something for the value of gold, you're not going to go to a designer house, you're just going to go to an independent jeweler. But with these pieces, you're not only paying for the value of gold, you're also paying for the unique designs and there's really nothing quite like these out there. You're also paying for the experience, the packaging, the whole shebang. So of course it's not comparable to the value, the market value of gold, you are going to pay a little bit more for these, but considering how much bang you'll get for your buck, how unique these pieces are, I think these are a much better investment than almost 
any other fine jewelry piece out there. And I would love to hear your thoughts on Hermes fine jewelry. Do you have a favorite piece? Do you have a least favorite piece? Do you already own any Hermes fine jewelry? If you do, please share your review with us in the comment section. And while you're down there, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate you being here and watching and I hope to see you back here with a new video really, really soon. Thank you.